right. Well, hello and welcome to OEN Engage. We are so very excited to be in community with you all this week. And we thank you for joining us for this session, OEN 101. My name is Barb, and I'm the Director of Community Engagement here at the Open Education Network. It's great to see some familiar faces in here. Saw a lot of them in Dave's last um, kickoff session. So I invite you to introduce yourselves and share where you're joining from in the chat. And as we begin, I'd like to also get a sense of what brought each of you to today's session. So we're going to start out with a poll. What brings you here? Our options are I'm new to the community and want to learn more. I've been part of the OEN for a while, but need a refresher, or I'm familiar with the content, but taking in all the sessions I can this week. So as you answer that, um, I have a few housekeeping items. Dave just shared the OEN land acknowledgement and our community norms in the kickoff session. So if you'd like to review them, you can find them at the links listed here. I'm joining you today from St. Paul, Minnesota, traditional and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. And we also welcome you to share your land acknowledgement in the chat if you wish to do so. This session is being recorded for the benefit of those in our community who are unable to attend live. And um, if you have any comments or question during the session, please submit them via chat and Tanya and I will do our best to address them. We'll also have time for questions at the end. All right, so we're gonna end the poll and share these results. So we've got a lot of new folks here, which is really exciting. So glad to have you here. Um, those that kind of need a refresher and a lot of people who are just jazzed to be at OEN Engage, which I think is really exciting. So I'm welcoming those of you who are here and can probably teach OEN 101 to share your comments that might be helpful kind of as we go through things in the chat. Um, over the course of the session, because I think that can benefit some of our new folks and is also just a great way to get to know one another. All right, so to outline uh, the session, we've got this slide. The goal for today is to orient you all to our community and familiarize you with some of the foundational tools available to members or just spend time together for those of you who already know these things. Um, a lot of this information can also be found in our onboarding course which we'll drop in the chat. And so we'll begin with an overview of who we are as a community and how you can connect directly with your fellow members before moving on to tools that you all have access to. And to wrap the session, we'll review the OEN Engage schedule one more time to give you an idea of how you can best plug in this week before we've got time for questions at the end. So who are we as a community? You may have just seen the slide in Dave's session, but as a, as a refresher, um, kind of beginning with our OEN staff, you can think of our team not only as a resource if you need us, but also as your biggest fans kind of cheering you on from the sidelines and cheering your open education initiatives on. I'll point out some of these faces that you'll be seeing over the course of the week or whose names you might already have seen in your inbox. We just heard from Dave, our executive director. Tanya and Jamie collaborate closely on our certificate programs, as well as our open educational practices initiatives. As our digital content strategist, Tonya highlights the work of our members on our website, blog, and social media accounts. And she's always open to ideas for blog posts and for our new community connections feature on the website. So she might reach out to you at some point in that capacity. Karen is our go-to person for all things publishing, and her and Cha Yang and Jamie also collaborate on the Open Textbook Library, or the OTL, as we call it. Andy's the one behind the scenes working on the OTL and the data dashboard. Lorraine is in charge of membership contracting and collaborates with Barry on invoicing. So for logistics for your membership, she is your go-to person. And in terms of my role, I like to say that I'm a big set of OEN ears as I'm here to listen to your needs and ideas and then bring that back to our team so that we can respond with programs um, and different resources to help address those needs. So please always feel free to email me with any questions, feedback, or ideas you have as I truly welcome that input. Um, and I don't know if who was in last session, but a full inbox is a good thing. So bring on those emails. 
Um, okay. And then our community is also you all, most importantly. As you can see here on the map, we are a global community of over 300 member institutions, consortia, and systems representing over 1,800 campuses around the world. Um, and if you'd like, if you're a map nerd like myself, or if you'd like to dive a little deeper into who your fellow members are or who might be located near you, you can check that out on the interactive um, map and member list on our website. With such a broad community of open education practitioners, that also means that no matter what type of institution you're at or stage in your open education programming or challenges you may be facing, um, similar to what Dave said, there are others in the OEN who share those identities and challenges or have experiences moving through them and can, can help support you with that. So just know that you're not alone and you've got a great network to tap into as a source of shared knowledge and support in your open education work. Every two years, we conduct a community scan to check in with members about the ways in which we can best serve you. And as a part of our last scan, we asked folks to describe our community in three words. And the word cloud on this slide was created with those responses. You can see um, in your own words, our members described our community as supportive, that big one, open, welcoming, helpful, collaborative, they also use words like active, resourceful, energetic, and committed. And um, I would say in my experience, this does really truly represent the culture of our community um, and really what our members bring to one another. So we hope that you feel the same sense of belonging and support as a part of our community and know that you're also a key part. And we hope that each of you feels uh, empowered to share the strengths and experience that you bring to the table as well. All right, so that was a little taste of getting to know who we all are here. Next up, we'll cover ways for you to connect with others in our community. Um, and um, just kind of like the lead into this, I just want to note that facilitating these connections between you all, between our members in the spirit of sharing support and collaboration is really the most important thing we do at the OEN. So uh, to highlight, we offer four channels whose primary purpose is connecting those in our community with similar interests and goals. The Colleague Connector Program, the NICE Forum, a self-named group that stands for Nourishing Interconsortial Collaborative Excellence, our Open Pedagogy Learning Circles, and the Publishing Co-op. So if you have ever wished you had a personal sounding board or colleague with whom you could brainstorm all things open education, the Colleague Connector program might be a good fit for you. Um, how it works is that you complete a simple application to participate and that you're then paired with one or two other open ed practitioners from within our community to expand your network, to share ideas and resources and support and hopefully inspire one another over the course of the year. The partnership or the program runs from September through May, though you're welcome to continue on with those relationships after it formally ends. We've got one full group meeting to kick off the program together at the beginning, and then partners are encouraged to meet regularly and sent monthly conversation prompts to help inspire discussion. There's also a mid-program virtual gathering with the full group in December, and then another one in May to conclude the experience, and we've actually got one of last year's program participants with us today. So I'm going to invite Trisha Boucher, the Open Pedagogy STEM librarian at Texas State University, to unmute and share a little about her experience. Hi, everyone. Um, so I would like to say this program is great. My partners in crime were great. Barb is great. Her prompts were great, even when we ignored them, which frankly was most of the time. No offense, Barb. But I was honestly surprised by how much it impacted me. Um, what I expected was that it would make me feel less alone in my work, and um, it really did. I'm lucky enough to work with an OER librarian who also participated. Hi to Isabel if she's out there. Um, she was in another group, but open pedagogy is kind of weird and squishy and ill-defined, and having others to talk to about it who actually get it is amazing. Um, we found that we had a lot in common, not in just what we do, 
Um, but in what we deal with in terms of libraries and universities and reorganizations and budget cuts and trying to usher in, you know, um, a culture change, get the idea. Um, but it's really a place to, it's a place that you can really talk about the stuff that impacts you and create a network of people who you're all on the same page, which is wonderful. Um, what I wasn't expecting was that it made me think more expansively about my job. I'm a librarian. Not everyone in my group is a librarian. And it made me kind of explore different career options, which I wasn't expecting and has been kind of cool. Um, I will say that uh, I use the word is very um, uh, deliberately there because our group is going to keep meeting um, and talking. Uh, Barb did a great job matching. And so we're going to keep doing it because we've had um, a really good time and it's been really helpful for all of us, which I am incredibly grateful for. So there you go. Back to you, Barb. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Trisha. And I'm super glad to hear that you're going to continue on. Totally fine that you didn't use the conversation prompts. Um, and yeah, I think actually that's a testament. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a testament. The good, the good matching is a testament to what you all, the time and effort and thoughtfulness you put into completing your Colleague Connector program application. So um, that application process is open at the moment through August 4th. So to best match you, I would just encourage you to put some time into those questions so that we can pair you with someone that would be a good fit. Um, we are also hosting an info session next Tuesday, July 30th, which will be good if you have like an OEN Engage, you're really missing our community. That'll also be a great way to meet with people again. Uh, it's at 2 p.m. Central and you can register and apply via the links in the chat. The NICE Forum is a space for members who are consortium or regional system leaders to come together to share best practices for scaling open ed initiatives across their membership. So we meet on the second Tuesday of every month from 2 to 3 p.m. Central to discuss a particular topic that was chosen by the NICE Forum members. And the format is pretty informal. We have usually two to three members sharing their experience on a particular topic, followed by a facilitated follow-up discussion. So um, Nicole Swanson, Senior Coordinator, Library Services and Outreach at the Consortium of Academic and Resource Libraries in Illinois, also known as Carly, is here to share her reflections on being a part of the NICE Forum. Over to you, Nicole. Thanks, Fer. Hello, everyone. I was drawn to participate in the NICE Forum because it provides a wonderful opportunity to connect with other consortia and systems furthering OER across their memberships and states. In this space, we get to learn from each other's experiences, talk about planned initiatives, share and learn what has been working well, and brainstorm together about challenges. As Barb mentioned, some of the forum sessions have a topical focus, like engaging students with open ed efforts, innovative uses of data collection platforms for sustainable impact assessment, and many others. Um, some sessions this year have been open brainstorming and discussion. Whatever the format of the session, everyone has the opportunity to participate and engage with the discussion. If you get pulled away or don't get to attend live, Barb shares notes afterward that allow you to still benefit from the information and resources discussed. So if you're thinking about joining, I would highly recommend participating in the NICE Forum. Supporting each other and learning together allows consortias and systems efforts to have an even bigger impact. So thanks, and I'll hand this back to you, Barb. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. And if there's other NICE Forum participants who want to add anything, feel free to do so in the chat. I appreciated you mentioning kind of sharing of notes after if you can't attend. I just want to reiterate that the this is a really informal group. So you can kind of drop in, leave, like we know you have really busy schedules and, and hopefully this is just a space that you know is here for you if and when you can join us. Uh, if you're interested in joining the NICE Forum, um, you can just email me and I'll add you to the list to make sure that you're on future events uh, invites. Okay, so our open pedagogy learning circle is a collaborative space to learn, discuss, and share about designing open pedagogy courses in community with one another. 
The learning circles take place over seven synchronous sessions each semester, and you can sign up on the interest form in the chat to be emailed information about the next round of learning circles. And this week's open pedagogy resources overview session happening Thursday at 2 p.m. Central, we'll talk more about uh, this and other open pedagogy related programs and tools available to you. Finally, joining the publishing cooperative is a way to connect directly with other colleagues interested more specifically in publishing open textbooks. Those who complete our Pub 101 program and want to continue to learn more about publishing alongside fellow members and kind of continue those discussions are invited to join the publishing co-op. Um, and you can learn more about this and other publishing focused opportunities at Wednesdays creatively named. So you're thinking about publishing session with Karen, which is happening at 10 a.m. Central Time. Oh, glad to hear, Tricia, that you um, found the learning circles to be super helpful, too. All right, so now we're going to um, switch gears a little bit and talk tools. As we head into talking about tool number one, we're going to do another poll here. So this time around, the question is, how familiar are you with the community hub? First option or response being, what's the community hub? Second, I've heard of it and been meaning to check it out. Third, I use it every now and then. And the last one, I'm a frequent flyer. Give you a couple more moments here. All right, so um, I think a lot of you are in the right place here. What's the community hub or been meaning to check it out? That's awesome. Um, some of you use it every now and again and some are frequent flyers. So again, frequent flyers are those who, who use the hub currently. Feel free to share your thoughts in the chat on it um, as we go here. Okay, so what is the Community Hub? Great question, everyone. The Community Hub is a collection of community-created, openly licensed resources to support you in building a foundation for your open education initiatives. So um, there's a lot of stuff on there. It includes all of the slides and support materials for OEN faculty workshops that we'll be teaching you how to deliver at this week's Train the Trainer sessions. It also houses an abundance of resources to support you with publishing open textbooks. And it's a place where uh, we also, the OEN team posts OEN news, blog posts, and other important membership updates. You can add an unlimited number of people to access the community hub, but note that it's most relevant to those supporting faculty with open education work when you're thinking about who that might be. And I'll show you in a minute how you can add folks to the hub. Those that have access currently can log into the Community Hub via the OEN website. As you can see here, just click on that little login in the top right-hand corner of our site. If you've already got access, you might want to log in now if you're able to, as we are about to walk through some of the Community Hub features together. And if you don't have access, just uh, email me and I can add you after the session. And here is what you see when you're logged into the Community Hub. Beginning with the Resources tab on the left-hand side, you can see that there's a number of different themed resource sections listed there. If you click on a section, it accordions down with a list of related materials to support your work. This is where you can find those materials for the OEN faculty workshops that I mentioned under the OER Adoption, Open Pedagogy, and Publishing tabs. And um, again, everything on here is openly licensed. So know that you're free to share anything you find on the community hub more broadly with your colleagues on campus or modify or customize the materials to fit your needs. On the right-hand side, there's a list of open textbook library data points, which um, you might find these numbers helpful to share with faculty as you introduce them to the OTL as a resource for finding open textbooks. Clicking on this purple button that we're pointing to allows you to submit a textbook to the OTL. And given that it fits our criteria for inclusion, we'll add it. And we really appreciate you, your help in expanding our continually growing collection. 
by clicking on the teal button in that section below, you're able to add details about any open textbooks that you or your faculty are in the process of developing, which will then show up on the OTL page under the coming soon section. So not only is this great PR for your open textbook authors, but it's also helpful to those who might be searching the collection and not finding quite what they're looking for as they can see the content that will be available on the OTL in the near future. All right, moving over to the events tab. This is where you can view details and registration information for events hosted by the OEN or by our community members. So if you're looking for upcoming professional development opportunities, this is a great place to start. If you are hosting an event and would like to invite our community, you can also um, do so by clicking the purple button on the right to submit those details, and then we'll be sure to add that to the calendar. We offer a number of recurring events, all of which are listed on the calendar. And just to highlight a couple of them here, every first Monday of the month, we host Publishing Tea Time, which is an opportunity to chat about specific publishing topic with time set aside to talk uh, what's called tea and sympathy with other colleagues that are moving through the publishing process and kind of what that looks like. We also host an open pedagogy community of practice on the last Thursday of each month, which is an informal space to share wins, we know how important that is, challenges and hot topics related to open pedagogy with your fellow members. Um, and then our community conversations, our event planning committee did a really great job of kind of putting together the format for these this year. These are themed sessions where a panel of our community members share about a more general open ed topic, followed by a space to connect with other members in small group discussions over that topic. So we'd really love to have you join us for, for any of these. Oops, and it looks like I might I said the wrong day, I think for the open ped community of practice, Wednesday, not Thursday. Thank you, Tanya. Okay, so moving on, um, and I see a question, are OEN events something we can share more broadly with faculty at our institutions or are they more designed for OEN reps and open education program managers? Great question, Sarah. Um, I would say most of the, I wouldn't say most, a number of our events are focused more so at those who are supporting faculty with open education initiatives, um, but you're more than welcome to share out event links uh, with anyone on your campus. So um, when you go to our event calendar, there'll be a link for you to click for each event that has a more thorough description on what the event actually is on that Zoom registration page. So just take a glance at that and that should um, clarify kind of who the event would be most relevant for. Thank you so much for asking that. All right, so moving along to tool number two, this is uh, my personal favorite tool, the Google Group Community of Practice. Our Google Group, as many of you know, uh, is an active welcoming space for you to connect with other members directly, whether that's asking questions to crowdsource answers, to perhaps find solution to challenges you're facing. Um, I also have been encouraging folks to share successes in the Google group as there's a lot to learn from those as well. And I think it can bring sometimes that much needed celebratory boost or some inspiration to, to our community as well. The Google group is also a great place for you to promote opportunities like events or conferences that you're hosting that are open to the broader open education community. And then uh, finally, it's also the place where our staff shares out information on OEN programs, professional development opportunities, events, application processes, um, and other updates. So really it is the OEN community in your email inbox. Uh, and kind of as with anything else in this presentation, if there's any Google group uh, users who are here today that would like to share anything about your experience with the listserv, feel free to add your comments in the chat. 
I do want to note that to maintain the focus of our and, and culture of our Google Group community of practice, members are allowed a select number of what we call delegates who have direct access to the group and act as liaisons between the OEN and their local campus community. Institutional members are allowed four delegates to access or be added to the Google group and consortium systems can add up to nine delegates. So that said, um, who's usually chosen for, for that delegate role? They're usually those who work with faculty on open education initiatives like librarians or instructional designers or um, oftentimes they're members of an open education committee on your campus or in your consortium. So people kind of in those open education leadership roles. Um, and the Google group is really made up of people at all different stages of open education programming with that said, including those who are just getting started. So we hope that you or your delegates feel welcome sharing and engaging with our community members in that space. And um, we definitely encourage you to keep the Google group top of mind as a place for you to tap into our collective knowledge, experience, and the generosity of our community, or as a space to continue the conversation um, at en for anything that piques your interest at OEN Engage over the course of this week. All right, so we've got another poll. I'm curious to know if those of you here, let's see. Um, are you a part of the Google group? Or if not, do you know who the delegates from your campus or consortium are? Yes, no, or I'm guessing there may be some, maybe so. Okay, so about half of you here are, so again, if you have anything to say about the Google group, feel free to share. Um, those who are not or not sure, um, this is a tool that you really want to be taking advantage of. I think it's it's just such an awesome, awesome resource. So if you have any updates or questions about who your delegates are, feel free to email me and we'll get that sorted out um, over the course of this week. Um, and Lauren, great question. Uh, she's a delegate and just wondering if there's a way to look that up without emailing me. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. And I'm just more than happy to look that up because we do have that recorded for each of our members. Um, so feel free to just shoot me an email and I'm, I'm happy to get back to you on that. I love email, remember? Exactly, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Oh, and then I do want to point out today that some of you here may come from what we call consortial institutions, meaning that you're part of an OEN member consortium or system, but not direct members of the OEN. And as such, that means that you don't receive your own delegates to the Google group. Um, so, but that being said, being a part of an OEN member system or consortium, if you do want to join as uh, an institutional member of the OEN, um, you would then get your own delegates to the Google group and um, you do receive a reduced rate on institutional membership um, as well. So we'll drop a link in the chat where you can learn more information about becoming a member and that reduced rate. And Barb, can you address Kathy's badging question? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Oh, yes. I did not see that one. Sorry. Um... Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Kathy, for pointing this out in particular. Um, I think it's under the Open Textbook Library uh, tab of the Community Hub. There are badges um, that we put together actually as a part of our Open Textbook Library's 11th birthday party celebration. Um, so that would be why the years are not up to date on there. And I am so happy that you pointed that out so that we can update them. You're welcome to do that if you can. Um, but otherwise, we will note that it is time for us to update those years on there. And those are really fun to use in terms of like a little fun, zero cost um, thank you that you can offer to those who are engaging with Open Textbook Library on your campus or authoring textbooks. Okay. 
All right. And last but certainly not least, I know we've got some users of the data dashboard in here today. So as always, if you have any comments as I kind of move through these next slides, feel free to share. Um, the data dashboard is, is the third tool that we're going to highlight today. It is a tool to help you collect and organize data on your open education initiatives. Uh, you can use it to follow up with faculty regarding OER reviews, adoptions, and enrollment information. You can pull the data from your dashboard for your reporting and advocacy needs and track your program impact, including student savings in there. So um, kind of what this looks like from the member perspective for data security and integrity purposes, we do limit data dashboard access to one or two administrators per institution uh, or consortium. Typically that's the main OEN contact and then uh, anyone else that you might have let me know uh, who should be the admin. This is another thing for those institutions that are not direct members of the OEN that I just mentioned. Your main consortial contact has or system contact has access to the dashboard that they can use on your behalf. So um, something to, to keep in mind. And again, should you join as an institutional member, you would then have your own your own admin. Um, and then, yeah, if you've got any questions about who your data dashboard administrator is, do feel free to or need to update that at all. Do feel free to shoot me an email and I'll um, get back to you this week. So in terms of how do you get to the data dashboard, uh, administrators will see an additional tab on their community hub. From there, they can add people to the community hub, like I mentioned before, access the data dashboard and view information on how to use it. So for um, those of you who are admins here, I welcome you to open your dashboard to explore and kind of click around as we go through the next couple slides. Uh, you just simply click the link to your data dashboard to enter the platform. And voila, this is, this is what it looks like or what you'll see. Um, okay, so for the next couple slides, I'm not gonna do a full tutorial, but gonna show you some of the basic dashboard functionality so that you get an idea and kind of a visual of how it might serve your data collection needs. Here is uh, the programs tab where you can create programs or groups of people that engage with your open ed initiatives, whether that be through faculty workshops that you host, grant cohorts, or simply groups of faculty that you might interface with over the course of the year you are able to add participants to each of your programs and then record program details to keep all of that information organized in one place. In addition to tracking your programs and participants, the dashboards also allows you to follow up with faculty by creating and sending email campaigns that we refer to as activity requests. There are two types of activity requests that you can send to faculty, the first being an invite to review a textbook in the Open Textbook Library that will generate a unique link for faculty to do so. And this is the follow-up method to our introduction to OER adoption faculty workshop that allows them to kind of then gain that firsthand experience with an open textbook and really helps them see the integrity of the materials and envision how they might integrate OER into their courses. So. Again, you want to attend tomorrow's Train the Trainer session on Intro to OER Adoption Workshop to learn more about delivering um, that particular one. And then the second kind of activity request that you can send is an adoption and enrollment update. This version generates a link that faculty can click to submit details on OER that they've adopted for their course, along with enrollment numbers um, for that course. So integrating that kind of activity request into your workflow can be a really great way to stay on top of that information while having that regular touch point with faculty on your campus. What you see on the screen as I'm kind of explaining all this is the activity request form that you that just walks you through the process of creating these email campaigns in your dashboard. And as someone, I always like to say, as someone who doesn't love learning new platforms myself, I can confirm that it's um, pretty intuitive and easy to learn. So um, just one more note on these activity requests. Once you've sent them out, you can track which faculty have completed your activity request um, so that you can kind of manage that st stipends or incentives that you're offering. Um, 
And in terms of tracking details on specific program participants, each faculty member that you add to your dashboard has a user profile. So you can see our open education champion and tennis champion, Serena Williams, is in this example. Her user profile allows you to record details about your interactions with her, and it provides a snapshot of how she's engaged with your open ed initiatives, tracking which program she's taken part in, any activity requests you've sent to her, and uh, OER adoptions or open textbook reviews that she's completed. Finally, the reports tab is where kind of the fun one where you can go check out your data and pull data from your dashboard for your own advocacy and reporting purposes. There's a number of data visualizations that you can download once you get more information in there or CSV files organized by different data points that you can download and then manipulate to serve your own reporting purposes. Um, yeah, and actually Lauren, coming back to your question, I see your comment in the chat. Correct, Under um, if you're a data dashboard administrator under your settings tab exactly is where you can see who your data dashboard administrator or administrators are. And then that's where you can manually add folks to access the community hub. But you're right that the Google group isn't tied to your dashboard. So you'll just have to reach out to me directly, which is also a good note. If you want to add someone to access the community hub and you also want them to be one of your delegates for the Google group, you are gonna wanna uh, email me so that we make sure that both of those things happen. Okay, so while that was a very quick overview of some of the ways in which the data dashboard can support your uh, data collection efforts, we offer more thorough training that you can move through at your own pace on our data dashboard documentation site, which we'll drop in the chat. Or if synchronous learning is more your style, our colleague Jamie leads monthly training sessions where she walks you through the dashboard functionality. So you can ask questions along the way. All upcoming training sessions are listed on the Community Hub events calendar, um, which the next intro and basics is happening on August 12th, you can see here, and the more in-depth deep dive session is on August 14th. All right, so now that we've covered all of those tools, next up is how to plug in during this week's sessions. Some of you may have seen this in Dave's session prior, but we'll review once again. Um, I'm really excited about the session happening this afternoon. We have a great opportunity for you to review some of the resources maybe I've shared out today uh, during what's called the Community Coworking Jam. So you'll have the chance to work on a to-do list item for a chunk of time, which may be one of these links that we've shared in the chat would be a nice time to review those. And then um, you'll have a chance to connect with fellow members at the end of the session. This is optional if you wanna stick around for that uh, to talk about what you are working on and your plans for OEN Engage Week. And we'll even be crowdsourcing a playlist during that session. So um, it should be a fun one. Another session focused on engaging with your fellow members that you may have seen Dave mention uh, is Thursday's community action session, during which our steering committee will lead a brainstorming discussion on how we can leverage our community's knowledge uh, to make a bigger impact on open education together. So please consider that one as we'd really love to hear your thoughts. And there was some really great energy in the chat um, around those at the end of last session. So it sounds like it's going to be a great discussion. And really, we're going to use whatever happens in that session to help guide our next step. So hope to see you there. And then, as you may have noticed, each day during the middle of the week follows a theme. So tomorrow's theme is OER adoption, Wednesday's publishing, and Thursday's is open pedagogy. And on each of those days, we have a different um, train the trainer session to teach you how to deliver workshops to your faculty members, engaging them with each of these topics. So Definitely attend those if you're interested in learning how to lead those and also learning best practices from some of our fellow community members who have been leading those workshops for a while. Uh, and then to close the week, the Colleague Connector Live session is a space for us to have some fun meeting others in the community. Really excited about this one as well. Um, we'll have discussion prompts and small breakout rooms where you'll have a chance to 
talk with three to four other community members um, about why we do the work we do, sharing some of your open ed successes and what you'll be working on this next academic year and to just celebrate the culmination of the week together. So we look forward to hopefully seeing you again at some of these sessions and we really hope that you find them to be useful and, and hopefully even energizing. So yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this morning, for soaking in all of this information I have just shared with you. Uh, we'll put my email in the chat once again so that you've got it, as well as a link where you can schedule a quick 30-minute meeting with me if you want to just talk 101 and go over any of these items together or perhaps discuss which opportunities might be the best fit for you, and I'm, I'm happy to help. So with that, I see we have five minutes left for questions. Uh, I'm going to just take a look at the chat here and see if there are any in there to respond to. Otherwise, feel free to unmute uh, and just ask away. Barb, there are a couple questions. Olivia asked, as a new delegate, is there a good place to start within the Google group? Um, and Adrian mentioned uh, something as well as me. Um, and then also Kathy S. Miller uh, mentioned, uh, has a question that has not been addressed as well. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so I'm going to start with Olivia's question. Um, and thank you so much, Adrian and Tanya, for responding to that. Um, in addition to what they shared, um, yes, the Community Digest is a monthly kind of like summary that goes out. Um, something I want to mention that when you're added to the Google group, um, as a new delegate, if you do want to go into the Google group page itself and kind of explore, there's a search function where you can enter a topic and it'll pull up all of the old conversations that have already happened around that topic. I do want to note that you do have to have an email address that's associated with Gmail, or you have to like tie your email address to a Google Drive account for you to be able to like actually go directly to that page. So that would just be my additional comment there. Um, and then Kathy's question about um, referring to the data dashboard, I would guess, um, do you organize programs by year or by event? And for repeated events, do you create separate instances or roll them all together? This is a question I would just, this is one I would actually maybe encourage you to ask the Google group, Kathy, and or have anybody respond to Kathy's comment here. I'm sure that will change program to program. And maybe this is a good um, inspiration to have a community conversation about how folks are using the dashboard. All right, any other questions or comments or are we in like information overload at the moment? Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your process for the data dashboard. All right. Well, um, I know this was shared way at the beginning of the conversation, but also to reiterate the um, OEN new member onboarding course has a lot of the information that I just shared in a place where you can just easily refer back to it. So Tanya, I don't know if you have easy access to maybe drop the onboarding course back in the chat again. <clears throat> Will do. And um, someone asked me privately, could you explain just briefly a little bit more about the badges? Oh, sure. So the badges uh, were a virtual party favor that we put together for the Open Textbook Library's 11th birthday party. And what they do, um, maybe I can uh, stop my screen share here and drop them in the chat. Um, but it is a badge that you can offer to your faculty. Um, yes, let me just pull this up here. Okay, so these are just fun badges that kind of name, uh, there's different badges for um, OER adoption, OER advocates, um, celebrating the open textbook library, badges that say I'm an open textbook author. So they're just a virtual way for um, you to uh, incentivize faculty perhaps, or give them something fun to celebrate the open education work that they're doing. Uh, we also have a document with instructions on how to use the badges. So they're just kind of an informal way, again, for you to be celebrating those that are doing this work um, and noted now that we need to update the years on those. 
I also wanted to, to add, if I could, I just dropped a link in the chat for updated badges so that there's no limit to the date there. It's it's just as established 2012. So there's no end date to it. You can just continue to use it. Thank you so much, Tonya. You bet. Awesome. Well, I'm glad these badges are getting kind of a second wind today. Um, I see that we're at time. So thank you all once again for coming. We're excited to see you at other sessions this week and hope you have a great rest of the morning. Mm -hmm.